So we're going to show the migration to 2.0. Uh, this is our new uh, release. And let me show you what, we, what we're starting with here. So at this point, what I started with was a 1.4.0 xClarity release. And you can see the update history here. Where we started with a base install. Uh, I added the license. And this is the the 141 pack that I've already added. That usually takes about 30 minutes to to apply there. Now, once we're in, once that 141 uh, package is applied, you can see that we pop up all kinds of uh, messages here um, saying that this is only for uh, migration uses only. So at this point though, even though it's installed, you can still click around um, you know, you can see your servers. As you can see, I have four servers here, um, three real servers and one demo server. So during the migration, we only migrate real servers. We do not migrate demo servers. So three servers will be migrated instead of four. You can go to the upgrade, you know, the management, and there are still certain things you can do here, but we don't recommend that at all. Um, what the main function of this is, is we stand up a separate VM of 2.0 and we're going to take over and migrate all these settings over. So to give you an idea of what was installed on 1.4.0, um, I did put the license agreement there. I populated all the uh, repository so we can see all the repository packs that can be added. I didn't add any firmware because that would, that would make it about a 3 gig process and it would take much longer. Uh, I did put a um, an OS in here to migrate uh, ESXi 5.1.16 and then there were some there's four servers here uh, that are going to be migrated over so to start the process what we would do is we would go to the update management server page and right here you'll see click here to access the export data and settings page so when we go here, this gives us a new page that you probably have never seen. And the first step in this is, besides reading the instructions, would be to create a data package. And once we do that, there will be no more clicking around. We'll be locked on this screen for good. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and, and create this data package. Now depending on the size of, you know, how much firmware you have in there, how many OSs you have on there, that's going to determine the uh, size of your package that you're going to export. And here you got the check boxes where if you didn't want to include them and just once you're over in 2.0 bring them in by yourself, you could do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click the OS's because I do have an OS in there. I'm not going to click the firmware because I don't have one in there. What it does is it asks for a specific phrase and if you hover over this it should give us a little information on it. And basically this is a phrase for when we unpack it and we're in 2.0, we're going to have to turn around and put it in there again. And it, and it won't let us see, so I'm just going to type something. Uh, and i got to remember to type the, the same way, which I didn't. Okay, I did there. So, and that can be anything. Uh, there's not a lot of, it's just something uh, that somebody else doesn't know. And right now this is where we start creating the data package. And we can sit here. So as you see that, that quiescent mode that has just started, that basically has locked us into this page at this point. So depending on how much firmware, how many, you know, config patterns, firmware, OS deploys, uh, that'll determine how big and how long this process can take. This can take up to like 35, 40 minutes with, on, on some very big ones. This one should go a little quicker. Okay, so our create data package has, uh, has completed now. Um, that took about 15, 15 minutes, I'd say. So as you see, let's see if we can go anywhere else um, back. And you can see we can't. Uh, we get that. Any, any of these pages that we're able to use to go to, it, it just takes us right back there. So we're, we're in what they call quiescent mode. So basically we're stuck. We gotta, we gotta, we're stuck in a good place. Now, now, now we have two, 
two choices here on how to go there and we're going to show both branches and let me just show you in this other tab what I have is this is our brand new VM this is the 2.0 and as you can see this is where we would import the package and everything so let me before we jump to that let me show you what we have to do here okay now that our package has been created we're going to go with option one which is uh, download data option two would be to push the data um, but we're going to go with option one, so you simply click download data, and you can see down here in the left-hand corner, it is downloading uh, the data to, a, to the local drive. And you can see we have, you know, there's some more information up here uh, just showing you the size. The package is going to, you know, it's version 1.4. We're going to move it to a 2.0. Uh, gives you the date of the package, the ID that actually um, created the package and the actual size, which will be a little over 402 meg. So it's uh, downloading as we speak here and uh, should be done in a couple of minutes. Okay, so now that we have the, the uh, package downloaded, we're gonna continue on our path one. So we would go over to, this is our, um, our XClarity 2.0 VM. And as you can see, we're sitting at the uh, update wizard. And you can see a, a new button here. It's, it's called Import Data Package. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit Import it. Uh, we're going to browse to it. And there it is. So we'll click on it. You can see it bought it in. So let's upload. And now we're uploading the data package. And again, on considering the size, you know, obviously that's going to affect the speed. Our data package is about four meg. If you put in some of the firmware repo, repo packs, it can be up to five gig. So, you know, plan for your time accordingly. Okay, so now that the uh, data package is imported, um, it asks us for our passphrase. So hopefully that's written down. And I imported my passphrase, and it validated the package. So I'll hit confirm. And again, you get it. it actually, what's kind of nice here is you get choices. You know, I had selected to put my OS images in there. Um, if I didn't want to put my OS images, if I changed my mind for some reason, if I had maybe more two O's that I was migrating to than just this one, and I only needed an OS in one of them. I could unselect that, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and it's 419 meg. I'm going to keep all these selected, including the network settings, um, all the inventory from all the old devices. So we're going to just hit continue. And we're going to say confirm. And so here's, here's where you got to watch what's going on. So because I have selected the network to, to take the network settings from the old VM, it actually goes back out and it says, whoops, I know, I know there's a VM with this same IP. You need to shut it down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my old VM that has that 110.243.5.138. And I, I'm gonna shut this down. Now people that have used XClarity before will always wanna go here and try this. Well, guess what, you can't do it. You cannot shut down the system anymore from, from, this, from this server. And so you might as well just cancel that. That doesn't work. You have to use this shutdown button here. So we use shutdown, continue, and it really shuts it down pretty quick, okay? So now I'm just gonna retry because we should have that IP gone. Okay, so he's going back out and checking. Okay, so our uh, import package is just completed, and once the package is fully completed, it actually takes you to the update management server page. As you can see, our version is 2.0 at this point. And from our old VM, which we can't check anymore because you remember we had to shut that down, but you can see that it did bring along all the um, update um, repositories that I put in there. The one you're going to notice, and don't get confused by it, is it does not uh, import the license. Uh, the license used to be the very last one that's shown up here. 
It doesn't show up here now, but the license is, uh, the system is licensed out. As you can see here, because if the license wasn't on, it would say 89 days till uh, your license is up. So um, that should save you a call. Update history, you can see that it was a 2.0 and we just had did the migration. So once your migration is done, this is what you should see in the update history. And like I said, this all showed up. Um, we, you know, we can check on our OS image, uh, see if that came over. Uh, yes, it did. So you can see our ESXi was there. Um, we didn't have any firmware. Um, this was one of the smaller uh, packages to export. It took about 20 minutes. When you put your, all your firmware and everything up there, it can take almost two, two and a half hours to do the export. So at this point, we are. This was uh, path one to go to. We're going to go ahead and move on to show uh, path two. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do option two, which I've been calling path two, which is actually pushing the data. So we are back at our original 141 setting where we had created our package. Um, I haven't hit download package yet. That was path one that um, actually downloaded it and then we imported it. We have a 2.0 VM sitting at the uh, update wizard at this point. So that's what we're going to uh, push to. So what we're going to do is instead of this time going download data, we're going to go option two, which is uh, push data. So we hit push and it wants the IP of the brand new VM, 2.0 VM that we're pushing to. And as you can see, that is 10.243.14.173. All right, and destination, let's see if we hover over there, it'll just, it just gives you a little more information there. So it does look like uh, you can use host name if you wanted to, but I'm just using the IP at this point. All right, so we'll continue. And now it's uh, checking here. It's actually going out and, and seeing if the server is there, the VM's there. And it looks like that got that and it pushed it. And that was pretty quick because again, I'm using the same package that we used in path one. It's about 500 meg. Again, if you're pushing a you know, five gig package, that's gonna take uh, a lot more time. So we go ahead and hit continue. And as you can see, in this case, it automatically opened up another browser window. This was the original one I had just in case, but it actually um, automatically went to that IP that I had given it. Okay, we have our passphrase. And I put that in there. Otherwise, we're not gonna go very far if you don't have that right. And so now we're in the process of unpacking the package onto the new 2.0 VM. And it confirmed that the package is valid. And we'll go ahead and go. And again, we're back to that same screen. We can pick everything that we want to do. And I'm going to go ahead and keep my OS image that I want to push over. Don't have any firmware to, to that uh, in my package, so that keeps it nice and small. And we confirm. And again, so because I am pushing the network settings, we're going to get this. We're going to get this box here, and you can actually hit ignore. And you could have hit ignore in the first pass too. Um, but we really don't want to do that because then you end up with two VMs with the same IPs, and that causes all kinds of problems, right? So I'm going to go back to my old VM. And remember, people that have used it are going to want to use this to shut that down, and you can sit there and hit that all day long, it's not going to work. You have to use this shutdown button. And it goes really quick. Okay, bam, it's down now. So we'll go back to the screen that they opened. So I'm going to just hit uh, retry at this point because there's no... There you go. Because the IP should be gone. Now it's importing and applying the package. Okay, so we just finished our um, push from our uh, 140 version to our 20 version and it just finished and it kicks us out to the dashboard page and if we go back and um, look at our update management server page uh, we can see we're at 20 here 
And you did notice that it comes to the, the dashboard page and in the first, um, in the update when you import it, it took us to the, the update management server page also. The, uh, you don't have to run through the wizard. So, you know, it, it, it takes all the settings, it takes all the network settings and there's no wizard to run through when you're doing this process. We can check for our, our OS image, see if that moved on over. And you can see it did. And um, see, again, you will not see the license, even though it was exported. And we, let's just double check that. And, it's, and it doesn't. Otherwise, it would say 89 days there. So overall, there's, you know, depending on the customer situation, there's two different ways to go about this. There's actually to download the, the package and import it. Um, that would be uh, maybe, if, you know, an example of that would be if you just had a couple of servers to do and, um, or if you didn't have access over the network to another server, you could uh, just download it, put it on a USB key and move it to the, where you could import it. If you do have access network to, um, for these, uh, pushing it might be the best option for the customer. Um, but overall, uh, again, the, you know, depending on how big your package is, is going to determine the size. I would say if you add your firmware in there, um, it would probably be a four hour process. We didn't have any firmware with just one OH image here and we were running probably about an, uh, around an hour to do the migration. Okay, thank you very much.